All right, welcome back to Saints on Cinema. I'm still Tim, and this is still Zach, and we're continuing our conversation on episodes three and four. Hopefully you just watched our episode talking about episode three. Now we're going to have our episode talking about episode four, not A New Hope, but episode four of The Mandalorian. <laughs> chapter four. Call, you can call it chapters like they're calling it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Chap, on the on the thumbnail, it'll say chapter. Actually, let's, let's just talk about A New Hope, because that's much more <laughs> exciting. Than... <laughs> uh, I didn't think this one was that bad. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, sanctuary. Now I gotta say, I'm glad you're here to do this uh, this conversation, Zach, because you have a lot more familiarity with the Seven Samurai concept and story. That's what it's called, right? Yep, Seven Samurai. Yep. Never. Right. I've seen Magnificent Seven, the newer one, not the one with the old Brenner, but the one with uh, Chris Pratt. I love the story. I love the concept. But when this this episode was trying, we're setting up. I was like, oh, it's the three amigos. How sweet. They're going to go find the little little town and save it from the guapo <laughs> and, 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 and taking advantage. I've seen this in other Westerns like Trinity. Um, one of my favorite spaghetti Western or Goofy. Anyway, um, but uh, I was like, this has been done over and over and over. And I didn't even think, oh, it's like Man Magnificent Seven. But I was thinking of three amigos and I was waiting for him to say there you go you can sew if only we knew this before and then then start doing something but that's funny here's the thing, Zach. i didn't understand what she was doing here i do I, i'm sorry you're gonna hate me for this everyone else hates me for this i'm sure i don't like this girl oh wow i like the concept i like her look i don't like her acting and i don't like that she like is like forcing not a straight face she's trying not to laugh the whole time go back and watch every scene when she's serious when she's like yeah you guys are gonna die when she's like yeah we're not gonna be able to help you or oh man Lori, what happens if you like every time she's talking she's her pauses and her delivery is really weird and she's smiling she's fighting this is really her. funny because I, I had a conversation on the internet earlier with people where someone posted yeah there's people that hate her and it's because they're sexist and i'm like I literally know no one who dislikes her. Literally no one. I'm on Facebook groups. Everyone loves her. And now I can't say that anymore. You actually don't like her. Jeez. I like her look. You like, know what else I like? This is going to sound no, I, I think she looks amazing. Next to the Mandalorian, she looks like she could manhandle him. Like, like she, and, and she does. Like when they're fighting, you're all like, oh, yeah, she's a beast. She's, yeah. she's hardcore. And, and she is in real life. Gina Carano is. She was a UFC fighter, and she's... She's built. She's, she, I was going to say that. I like that she's not super slim, super whatever, like, like yeah. Disney or Ray, or Disney, whatever, <laughs> Daisy Ridley. Is that yeah. her name? Yeah. Or who's, Felicity who's Jones. And, insanely uh, slim and also yeah. is one of the worst on screen runners that exist, but yeah. yeah. I like Daisy Ridley more in episode, um, or in The Last Skywalker, whatever it's called. <laughs> the, the Last one. Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> when she was, uh, when she was, a little, she put on a little muscle for the second movie. I like that. I like this girl, whatever her name is, because she's pretty solid. She almost not like that, but she's she's not like skinny. You know, what well, I mean? she's a and former I, rebel trooper too, which is uh, okay. Like That's it makes cool. sense. Okay, he takes off, goes to this planet, which is uh, like old Mexico. If you're going through the Western theme here, just like every other story. And he gets down there, um, and uh, just quickly, on the way there, you have yodeling, flipping the switches and pushing the buttons and annoying the man. become a massive meme, which is really <laughs> funny. I have you it. seen that with the music? No, I love it, yeah. where everyone puts on the music. Gee, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Social uh, media, great for the Disney culture, great for the fans. Let them love and revel in this. And I agree with the point, and this, this is an example. This show is what was needed to bring fandom of Star Wars back together because right. everyone was so split and it was perfect right before the last uh, Sky... Rise of Skywalker. Rise of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> Rise of the Last Jedi. <laughs> the Rise of the Last Skywalker. And uh, this is beautiful for that. I love seeing Star Wars fandom come together, but oh, I, it's just so in my face. And I'm not a big social media guy anyway. I try to stay off it. I'm, it's just more reason to avoid it because I don't want any spoilers for trailers for episode whatever we're on, and I don't. I'm sick of all the <laughs> the stuff from this. But I'm glad everyone else is having fun. But I'm gonna stay out of it. Anyway, 
he, he lands on this planet, right? He gets out, he goes to the inn, the little, the, the local cantina, right? right? Goes in, sits down, and he sees this girl. First of all, does he know her? No, he doesn't know who she is right off the bat. They explain okay. the scenario later after the fight. She, she, okay. t- she explains what happened. Good. I've seen this three times, half paying attention two of the times. Okay. But I need you to explain. He sits down, he's watching her because she's watching him, and he's like, something's off with the way she sits or whatever, and she has, you know. I think it's it's her build and her look because yeah. this is a little farming third world, yeah. uh, third uh, would you call it third world equivalent, yeah. and she's. Awesome. She's this beefy, obvious former soldier slash current soldier right. out of place, right? With a little pouch of Imperial credits to pay for her drinks instead of like tuppets or whatever. I don't know. Right. And she's she's there, and then he's distracted talking to the waitress. The waitress, uh, they have a conversation, and then he sees she's gone. Gives the Yoda his drink, goes after her, flips the coin. Very Western, very cool. Watch the baby, whatever. Struts out there, turns on his thermal boot goggles, right? And he can see the footprints in the, in yeah. the ground. Follows it around, and then she ambushes him. They have their little scuffle. Once again, he uses his flamethrower. Doesn't work. I love that. I love that it can't get him out of anything, because Boba Fett couldn't use it either. Anyway, he gets up. Did he ever try it? He never tried. He shot his rope. He never yeah. tried Anyway. Gets out there and they turn and they have that cool shot where they have their guns on each other. And then they turn and look and Yoda's just drinking. Just <laughs> enjoying his <laughs> Love it. Then he says, do you want some soup? Then they go inside and talk. She says, you're not part of the guild. No, she says, you were part of the guild. What are you doing here? He says, I didn't think anyone else would be here. Kind of a thing. We're trying to lay low. Is what it right. She says, you can't be here because I'm already here. Is she part of the guild? Is she so, just saying this is, you're, this is gonna not? I well, just, she thought there might be a puck on her, right? Which is the reason she kind of jumped him to begin with, I mean, and then and yes, so, she, so I think she may have been a former member of the guild, uh, or and and she's trying to isolate herself on, or she's trying to just get away in general. Right. Um, he says this story. You need to explain this to me. She tells this little story about how after Revenge of the or the Return of the Jedi, she almost said it. <laughs> After Endor, she was going around helping small colonies or whatever get back together. That was most of her work, is what she said, something like that. Was she a rebel helping? Was she a mercenary hired to help in the the disarray of the government? Or was she in the guild? What do you think? What did you get out of it? I didn't understand. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's okay, it wasn't totally, clear for anyone. totally real. I, yeah, but I don't think that's relevant to... I, I mean, it's something we might find in a book or visual dictionary. It doesn't really change the arc of the episode, though. Will Pablo Hidalgo tell us? I just <laughs> think I, and it wasn't. It didn't change anything for what she was doing there or anything. I just was kind of lost for a second, trying to follow who she was because they kind of had some kind of a, a familiarity with each other, at least professionally. Who not the identity of the other person. But she's like, okay, he's a bounty hunter, Mandalorian. He's like, she's a fill in the blank. I'm going to respect her. Otherwise, why would he care about leave or leaving her here to go somewhere else? Well, you know so I, mean? I, yeah, I, I assume she's some kind of former bounty hunter or mercenary, which is the reason that he went to go check her out. Because if she was a bounty hunter and she had a puck for the little baby Yoda, um, mm-hmm. she, you know, that then he needed to deal with it. But obviously when he's fighting her and the baby Yoda is standing there and he pulls the gun on her is when he's like, well, there's no beeping going on. Obviously, she's not really going after the baby Yoda. She doesn't know what's going on. And that's okay. when they go in and have a conversation. Right. I just, I don't know. It was, it was fine. I was curious and intrigued. I, I, wanted to I, be- I, I do want to know more about her story because, I mean, she was a freaking, she was a, the equivalent of Black Ops, right? For the Rebels, from what it sounds like. And so I, I do want to know more, but I mean... I was like, she's just giving a quick, hey, yeah, I, post the war, I've just been either being a mercenary or bounty hunter on the outskirts of, of society. Based on her dialogue when she's talking to the villagers later, she definitely wasn't some high-ranking commanding officer who was commanding troops with every, any leadership or anything. She right. had no persuasion. She was very awkward. And, and maybe she you was like... You think so? I don't know. <laughs> 
You're, you're really judgmental. I, I didn't think that at all. Maybe I'm biased because I love Gina Carano, but I was just like, no, this is great. I thought she did great. <laughs> I don't know. I was just there, this was supposed to be like an intense episode. It really was. This was. Do you remember Firefly? Do you remember the same ep same episode in Firefly with the whorehouse under attack? Yep. Yep. That was intense and good. This one, she's like joking, and this turned more into um, Army of Darkness when he's teaching the villagers how to like use their sticks. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's a direct correlation to Seven Samurai. They taught the villagers how to fight him because they were outnumbered. That, I, that, that's direct homage. What's that? The same steps with the sticks? Uh, well, like, oh, gosh. I'd have to go look. What, what I mean is that same, this, they do the same thing in training the, the oh, village to fight the bad guys. I get that. But it was like, the way she, when she was training them how to fight, I'm okay with them training, just like the three amigos utilize their snowing or their sewing. But this felt more like um, Robin Hood men in tights when he was like training them how to use their, the forest and shoot arrows and stuff. And it was just, it, it was just almost comedic the way they did the little the montage of their of their pre preparation. Anyway, I'm just gonna be alone on this. I don't. I, it's fine. The the tone I did not feel like it was there was anything dire or serious. The Firefly episode absolutely felt real. Through this felt more like Three Amigos, where I was like, no, there's no real danger. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, I think that's a fair comparison. Like I said, this isn't like, this is the probably the least best of them. I get what they were going for, and so I can appreciate that. So um, seven samurai. But, but if you compare it to the what's the what, yeah that that Firefly episode, which actually didn't even air, that was only on DVD. Yeah. Um, so good. The, the golden, a... the golden something. But uh, yeah, that that episode was amazing and intense what, what and it had huge like? character revelations so yeah from that perspective i i think you're right they did much much better with that than this episode but seven samurai what was that like what was the tone was it like really oh dark? it was very oh yeah like they were in dire straits and the samurai had really awesome moments like usually they had individual moments where they go off into the woods to be fair this is a much shorter episode and seven samurai they had seven samurai right yeah. so but you know. Firefly was still short, but still, you know, and I was I was okay with how quick they cut it. But even if you took Army of Darkness, the length of time that are the that sequence in Army of Darkness is about the same amount of time as this. Well, and Serenity is the same running time, too. or Serenity Firefly. The episode would have been about the same running time too, and they do do a much, 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 much better job. So, yeah, I think I you I think you have pretty fair criticism in that respect. You know, Thank you. one of the things that really happens in that episode in, in Firefly is you have Mal uh, hooks up with the lead lady yes. at, at the whorehouse and um, what's her name yeah, is not supposed to care. An Anara is not mm -hmm. supposed to care, right? Because she's like, well, you can do whatever you want. But then she's sobbing um, yeah. after it happens because she's, she's basically a hypocrite, right? Yeah. And she knows it. Um, there's some other stuff later you find out too that uh, in the comics that that even further emphasizes that which I don't know if you know this but she has a terminal disease which is why she left the convent to begin with Anara did? Yeah she has a terminal disease she's oh, gonna die yeah. and it's also one of the reasons she has to go in and get checked up it's not just for I was like she's out spreading that disease all over that's more it's, it's not an STD that's the terminal disease yeah, yeah. It's it's something else but so yeah you have a lot of interesting character interactions and moments that really reveal like her hypocrisy and Mal's feelings for her and you know um and some of the trying to have some real character moments in this one but I'm sorry in the three amigos where you have Dusty meeting the one random other girl and you have uh oh, what's his name um, Ned at the very end just this hot chick comes out to say goodbye and he just kisses her and she's like beautiful yeah Wasn't you're right at all that's how the end of this episode felt, Zach. I'm well, sorry. Well, this episode does have, and you know, the end when he kind of rides off into the sunset, I liked it because it's like, that was a very Western theme, right? The cowboy can't stay with the girl. He's he's yeah. not he's that's not okay. good enough and meant for it, right? But yeah. but that but that's like, that's pretty superficial compared to some of this, the character development you see in other things. Well, and that's all I'm talking about is like his conversation with the woman about the, he just, they drift into the, the town. We already know, you know, he gets in there. He's like, well, I, we got to find somewhere else. He's loading up his ship. 
the, the villagers come with their little really, really slow cart. I don't know what they were doing. He's like, we're from really far away. Apparently, they tra started traveling a month ago to get to him. And then he's like, I'll take the job because you have a lot of money. I'm going to give it to her. She's sleeping out on the campfire, even though she's like living here in this little settlement. She's He's like, you ready for round two or whatever? She goes with him, and they have their little conversation. Gorgeous shot, by the way, of Yoda looking up at the sky as they're traveling between the trees on the path. That was a beautiful shot. I loved it because it brought this real natural, like, this is like a home. This is not like ships in a port or anything. It's like this is a real the place where we can live. Kind of like the other episode of Firefly where they where they land in that little western town and um, River drip wanders off to dance with the, the yeah. local and everything. <laughs> they feel like this is a good place where we could stay. But they're traveling and then they get to this the the farm way out in the distance and they get there and all of a sudden they start talking about his helmet okay that's fine they're trying to force this dialogue so we understand more about mandalorian culture and who he is because he's establishing that he's following the codes right. but then this girl he just met is like oh when how long has it been since you took it off or whatever blah, 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 blah. no real genuine conversation she walks outside and he tell he starts telling her who he is remember the first episode i said is he going to be dark and menacing and pensive and quiet or is he gonna like talk a lot like he like uh, like he did later on? Apparently, this guy just talks. He doesn't even care. So he's met this stranger, talks to her about his culture, talks to him how young he was when he picked up when he like was a foundling or whatever. And it's like, okay, this is all for the audience. I'm not buying this real genuine conversation. Maybe if he had the conversation with the rebel chick, but not this random girl who set up his little hut. Form, right you're looking at this all wrong tim oh okay it's fine i don't know bad I'm boy to... trying to tempt the innocent girl from the small village <laughs> uh, he's a big bad mandalorian like oh yeah i i've lived such a hard life and she's like oh yes yes you have i i i'm now in love with you oh come on you know you his <laughs> post trauma from his childhood and everything. Like think of Cassian from Cassian, right? From Rebels or Rogue One. Rogue he One. wanted to start spilling the beans about his childhood. Well, he was running around with what's her name for like the whole half of, of the movie before he finally was like because he was forced to blurt it out. I've been in this war since I was six or seven years old or whatever. It's like. Yeah, you, you have all this stuff from your childhood kept in. You don't just start spewing that out because it, she looks cute or whatever. He's like, no, oh. I, 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 I think it's actually, uh, joking aside, I think I think the innocence of the town, He he's just more than willing to open up to him. Yeah, I, I don't think he's worried about it. I it, It's fine. I didn't mind that the dialogue happened. It's just I didn't believe that was a good enough setup for him to actually take off his helmet, set it there on the windowsill with all these kids playing, and then him start eating the apple pie, you know. Oh, I yeah. I didn't think that was bad. I think he was just taking it off to rest. I don't. He didn't show anyone his face. He's right in sight. If he's gonna do that, draw the shades, then take it off, so the audience is like, oh, pan up, pan up. But it uh, doesn't. I mean, you're complaining about something that's a potential that didn't happen. I I, I don't think that's a problem. I'm complaining because he did, she went outside. To did see one him. of the kids look up and see him take his helmet off? Like I I don't want to see him. I, I like the shot. No, no, no. What I Ron, she's like trying to take it off for him now that they're supposed to have had a relationship for three weeks or whatever. And he's like, no. And he pulls her hands down. It's like, well, she should have turned left earlier in the episode. She would have seen him. I didn't get that. Uh, um, I felt like that they were exploring the possibility that if he did stay, they could have a relationship. I don't think it because if she took it off, that's him saying, yeah, I'm going to stay. I'm going to retire and do this life. I don't think it. they'd had a committed relationship already. Uh, I, I didn't get that out of the episode. I don't think it was about the relationship. I think they're just trying to say, hey, look, Mandalorians don't take their helmet off unless they're going to eat. Because she says, when's the last time, time you took that thing off? He said, like, yesterday. She's like, when in front of someone? He's like, well, I was like their age. You know, it's like, right. but then he takes it off in front of them right there. I think he should have drawn the way. If they just want to show that he takes it off to eat because we want to make sure he doesn't look creepy and gross and sweaty under there take it off after he closes the blinds he's by himself and tease the audience that we kind of want to see it and then just cut and then later on be like oh he's gonna take it off for her but then he does it because i think i think you're just giving it a, a different way it could have gone down versus like an issue because no one saw anything in the end right 
Like, it, it doesn't actually matter. Because they were playing soccer right outside his house. They were too invested in the game. I just think a Mandalorian who is that enclosed culturally and they're cut off and they try and keep this, uh, this blank persona in front of other people, that's their culture to hide themselves and not reveal their face. It was a weird thing for him to take it off while he was sitting there eating his apple pie watching them play soccer. I, I yep. guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, you're anyway, complaining about something that didn't happen, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's like... I don't know. It's not a great example. Like It would be like Obi-Wan just walking into Moss Eisley and just like sitting there and like on the side of the road playing with his lightsaber just make sure it's still the battery's still working or something and then turn it off and like, well, no one saw, good thing. It's like, no, you're gonna be a little more precautious than that. I didn't, it didn't make any sense for him to, to do that other than a cool tease for the audience after a conversation about the helmet. They're having a lot of conversations about helmets in the last three episodes. And now he's just like, eh, I just got here. I don't know any of these people. She was kind of cute taking it off, but I'm not gonna show her my face later. But right now she could just turn left. Anyway, whatever, okay. Let's get let's get through this. So he he settles sets up and then and he and the girl say we're gonna go check this thing out and find out what the threat is. They go off and they start seeing the well. First of all, he puts on his magic uh, footprint thermo goggles on. It's been hours or who knows how long since these guys have run through. I don't know how long footprints in boots are gonna stay in the dirt with heat. Or whatever, so for him to see it, I don't understand these magic goggles he has. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the technology is. I'm sure they're going to explain it in, again. This is another one they'll explain in a book or a visual novel or a visual I dictionary. Know. They're going to release the Mandalorian visual dictionary, and it'll have the page <laughs> with the picture of his mask. It's like all the people are all like, "How did the bombs drop in the Last Jedi?" And it's yeah, all like. They're going to come up with an explanation. It's going to happen. It just they aren't. The show's not explicit about any of that type of stuff. I don't expect it to start being now, and I don't want it to be, to be honest. Like, I don't. I don't. I, it's just like why is he? He just looked like they were hours ago. They're wearing boots. This is not like a heat. It does whatever. Then he sees the big footprint for the ATST. Did you yeah. know it was an ATST at first? Yes, I did. Because I remember I that. Know. Just because uh, you saw the footprint. From Return of the Jedi, yeah, they had the they had those things stomping all over in Return of the Jedi. That's that's cool. Yeah. I didn't, wasn't really paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> he goes on, and then the oh, they go back. They say you guys need to move, and I like that because it made me like, look how intense this is. That we got hired to come stop these guys from raiding you, but now we're telling you you got to move. And then they go back, and they're like, they're like, no, we can sew. He's like, all right, well then let's utilize your sewing skills. So. <laughs> She has her horrible dialogue and horrible delivery telling them, oh, I've seen these guys take out warriors or whatever. Just awful. She's trying not to laugh because this is such a pathetic conversation she's having. And she says, uh, we're going to help them. Or, that we're going to take out the walker. You guys just have to keep, um, keep us covered while we do that with your sticks. They go out there. They're already in these little the, the strategically placed ponds that are already ready for an attack from a excuse me, from an ATSD walker. They go out and uh, he says, <laughs> I need you guys to dig a trap. I didn't see any trap that was dug other than the water that was already there. And then so by the time the walker comes later on, it just goes to the edge of the water, stops, looks around, and then just for some reason forgets the water's there and then decides to take a step. I didn't understand that part. It's not a huge deal, except it kind of ruined the whole point of the the trap or whatever. I did like the uh, little... Well, they're growing plants there, and it sounds like they create a vodka, which usually, if it's like a rice paddy field, if you're comparing it to them, there's usually low levels of water um, that the plants are growing out of. So it, they probably took their field where they were growing, which where the water wasn't very deep, and then just dug it a lot deeper and filled it with water. Uh, that that's probably all they did. <clears throat> Actually, that's probably exactly what they did. So, and then the thing, the reason it steps is not because it, they, so they, they are, they were trying to lure it. It obviously had it figured out. The Mandalorian yeah. does a pot shot inside and then they're, whoever's driving is disoriented. And then that's when it steps. Cause I was actually watching for that specifically. I'm like, 
why would it step after guessing that there's nothing yeah. there? But it's actually well, after it's after the Mandalorian <laughs> does his shot, and whoever loses control and it steps forward, and then it falls over. What? Well, it's not like attached to a guy like in a gear. Like there's just controlling with levers and stuff. If right. You have so to... so and there's usually two people, right? Yeah. So he blasts one of the eyes. The guy probably inside falls over and hits the other guy. Not and he hits the control forward. That that seemed pretty and obvious to me. Is like step forward. I don't. I don't know. I don't. It almost. It to me. It looked like he decided to step forward. Like, well, fine. I'm just gonna start walking. It. I. I. I didn't understand it. It didn't make sense. And that, that speculation on both of our theories is like you could have shot that a little better. That made it make more sense. Or figure out a better trap because even the Ewoks came up with better ideas than this thing. Anyway, I love the visual of the walker though. The red light inside. I watched it with Lance's uh, kids and he's like, why does it have red eyes? I was like, could they just change out the, the lamp on the end? Bulbs, the yeah, the bulbs. <laughs> you know? It made it a bit more menacing. Also, one of the things, the first time I watched it, um, I didn't notice this, but then I saw the, the fan art, the, not the fan art, they released the uh, concept Ooh. art. And it showed it had paint on it, so I pulled it up, and I, when I watched it a second time to kind of go through it, I saw the paint on there, which is cool. On the body of it? On the face, yeah. They, they, so the, the raiders had painted it so that it, they kind of made it their own. So they acquired it from however <clears throat> and then painted it, which is, which is pretty cool. It's a nice little touch. Okay, here's the other question. The Mandalorian and the girl go off looking for the little hideout. That's when he turns on his magic um, feet, feet pole goggles. And they also see the walker. But then by the time they get back, this is the tracks that they just made. They go back to the thing and it says, oh, you have an ATSC or a, 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 an armored walker in case no one's ever seen the, the Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi. And then they come back and tell the villagers that. And they're like, well, what is that? They've never even seen it. It, it was walking around the forest a little while ago. I mean, it's no, been they've, making they've seen it. It attacked him at the beginning. Um, the in walker? fact, yeah, the walker attacked him at the beginning. Then how come they were like, what is that? They didn't know what it meant, what it was. They were pretending she, oh. they didn't know what it was. The Mandalorian calls them out, or no, no, no. Uh, Cara Dune calls them out on it, I think. She says, you guys knew that that walker was there and you didn't tell us when you hired us. Okay. They well, called, that the, makes they called the villagers on that explicitly. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to rewatch for that conversation because it was like, why? It's been attacking them. How come they're suddenly don't know where the walker is. Other watch, than the, watch the beginning and you'll see the laser blasts. Um, and, and the reason is because I was, I, I had a few questions about how this played out. So I actually re-went through those parts of the episode to figure it out. Because on my first watching, I was like, hold on, what exactly happened here? Which actually right. says something about the episode um, and, and, and not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> But you I didn't, didn't like clearly, so you knew what was going on. Right, yeah. So I went back and I'm like, oh, okay, there are laser blasts at the beginning. And Cardoon does call the, the villagers out for lying about it. Um, okay. The other question I had at first was like, well, why didn't they just blow up the walker when they went in and snuck in to, to bring in right. the tribe? Well, yeah. my, my assumption is this, this little raider group is too scared to raid anyone without the backup of the ATST. So if they had blown it up, the tribe would have just not done anything. They're all like, well, we aren't going to go attack them. They just blew this up. They wanted oh, to lure them all out and, and take them all out at once. Right. So that's the that's question. That's my right? assumption. You're either a Mandalorian experienced bounty hunter or you're an experienced ex rebel slash mercenary or whatever who's seen action, including walkers. You find out that this little raiding party lives in a little hut and they have a walker. Is your plan to lure it out to the village you're trying to protect and fight it one on one or sneak in there where you're already sneaking in to kill a couple of guys to sound the alarm where you can just throw a grenade in and blow it up or sabotage it there? That's what I'm Start saying. I'm thinking they, they needed to bring it out so that they could kill the other raiders. I, I don't know if the raiders would have come out and attacked the and they could have killed them all necessarily. Them all because they even run off into the into the into the um, forest at the end of it. But anyway, what I think would make sense is not like you said. Don't bring it to the village, but bring yeah. it to the edge of the forest and have it fall into a trap there, and then have the village attack all the rest of the raiders that have come with it. That would have been smarter. That way, the village doesn't get half blown up uh, by the ATST by by bringing it out. 
but that's assuming that logic and and like i said uh, i had to watch it a second time to kind of put all this together just so you know and it's there a lot of that's there uh, the, what i just said is not there explicitly <laughs> so the like, you gotta figure it out the rest is pretty explicit but you have to I, I did have to look at it a second time and go, wait a second, what is right. going on? If you need so much like headcanon to make this fight make sense, it, it, all it was was a cheap way to, it was like a video game level. We got to have a way to have a mini boss come out and so he can fight the glowing red eyed with no, you never see the guys inside of it. It's just right. an automated ATST for them to fight so that we can say, hey, look, we had a boss battle. And, uh, they took it out. And this, going back to your, your conversation right about dialogue, here's the two things that they say. This goes back to the your mom jokes, right? He says, when she charges in after the ATSC, he, say, or he goes, come on, you got this. That sounds earthy to me. And then she says, come to mama. That's too earthy for me. That's not Star Wars type. That's not like, go, I'll see you in hell. Which well, apparently it is Star Wars terminology, but I agree with you. It is earthy. But apparently it is based on all these other Star Wars lines that exist. But they really need I, to stop doing it. They need to stop doing that. Right. <laughs> I'll see you in hell never bothered me. And it doesn't. Really? That's it funny because I'm like, what? What are you and talking I was, about? I was with the your mom thing. I really was until everyone else complained about it. And I was like, okay, I see their point. It is pretty earthy. I didn't like the pun that Darth Vader does in Rogue One. But in Rogue One, yeah, that's a little. But, okay, that's just, that's a character thing, not an earthy thing. But you know, they're spewing out between Canto Bite being the uh, the uh, Vegas and everything. Like they're just making everything feel too much like Earth as it is. These kind of lines really start to um, shoot off red, red alarms for me. I just I hated those two. I mean, I was thinking about the first time I watched. I was like. Why do you say that? That's such that's dialogue that we would say in a regular show. Not, yeah. you know, anyway. Okay. He goes and they have this battle. They turns on the lights. That was awesome. It blinded them at the beginning of the battle. It was looking around. It was figuring out what it was doing. And then it didn't start shooting any missiles or anything. Those things are not just two guns. She describes it. It's a big armored walk with two huge cannons. That, yeah, you're right. That's when she called them out. And they're like, oh, I don't know. But it's like, hey, it has, also has huge grenade launchers and other missiles and stuff on it. I was like, it didn't shoot anything else. Maybe it didn't have those accessories or the ammo or anything. Yeah, okay. yeah. if it's a recovered one, that would make sense. It didn't have any of it. That's fine. But it didn't seem like it was shooting very much. Then again, how do they how do they charge up the, the laser cannons if they right. don't have anything? They live out in the middle of nowhere. Maybe it's yeah. solar powered. I don't know. <laughs> it goes the edge. Do they have that? Is that a Star Wars canon thing? I don't think solar power is, although it makes sense <laughs> for them to do that. But um... well, why not? You're already saying your mom and come to mama and whatever. Anyway, it goes the thing. It's and saluting. It's like, Mandalorian says, "Get or state or hold your ground or whatever." He says, like, he says, "Don't," or he tells them to get down, but don't run. It doesn't start shooting. If your whole thing was relying on this ATSC. Why wouldn't it just start shooting? It didn't shoot anyone. It turns on its floodlights. Anything? I think it was just trying to figure out what was going on. But it does start it does start shooting. It does start shooting at a certain point. One, like it starts shooting when it starts seeing them coming at it, but it doesn't feel like it. It would just be like like the ones on Endor were blowing away, um, shooting all over the place, trying to get to the Ewoks. Just choo 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 everywhere. The sound design for the ATSC was awesome. I loved it. I love when it collapses down and made the same noises from Jedi and everything. It sounded so cool. And then we started shooting and then he goes up and throws a grenade and the explosion. Everything was incredible with it, except for the logic of the scene. That's all I'm gonna say. Anyway. <laughs> well, I agree with some of that. I disagree with some of it. Though. That's okay. Some that's of it, okay. I, some of it I was fine with, but there was a lot of things I was like, okay, that's weird. Why, why are you doing that? Right. Anyway, it falls down, and then um, and then they start running away. And I think you're right. They they uh, but it, they start running away when a few of them start getting stabbed with these poles. Again, I, it just seemed like a really cheap way. I didn't understand why she. It should have had some, a single line of why the one lady that he fell in love with somehow. Um, well, I, I thought one of the dudes was gonna die, which would create like an emotional connection for some of the people. Thank or you. Something. One of the villager guys. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's cut to there. The, the whole battle is over and pointless, I mean, other than, look, we did a Seven Samurai thing. Did you guys like uh, that one movie? Yeah, well, here it is again. You saw Three Amigos, you thought, saw Magnificent Seven, here's our episode. Anyway, so we cut ahead. He's standing at the doorway while Yoda's playing and eating frogs. And then he's standing at the doorway with a totally cliche Western stance, leaning yeah, up against the door. Which, kept which is great. Now, that's okay. That's the whole theme of the show. And she's sitting there with her legs up, like whittling, <laughs> whatever she's doing. <laughs> Make a little X Wing for Ray in the future or something. And then the lady comes out, like she's like, oh, I just gave birth to a calf or something, right? She comes out, and then he has this throwaway line of, like, well, we stirred up some trouble three weeks ago. Yeah. That was their way of telling us that time had passed and that they were spending time together. It was weak and stupid. They have a conversation. She goes off to play soccer with the kids. And then he goes after her saying, I've got to leave the baby, right? Right. Suddenly, out of nowhere, she has another conversation with him about his helmet. Why are we, why are we talking about the helmet at these two? I, I just got into town. Let's talk about my helmet. Had a battle. Three weeks later, porch talking about I got to leave Yoda. By the way, tell me about your helmet. You weren't even the one in the previous conversation. Why are you suddenly asking about the helmet other than we got to get this concept out to the audience? I just think it was really stupid. Are you talking about Cara Dune or the lady yeah. in the village? Cara Dune, that's her name. Oh. Yeah. She I, suddenly yeah. says, no, oh, tell me what happens if you do take it off. I could never put it back on. What's funny um, is I, I agree with your sentiment. I disagree with your reasoning for why you think they did it. <laughs> <laughs> why do you think they did it? I actually think they did it to set up the cowboy homage to 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 for the relationship, so that when he goes to talk to the girl and says, "No, I gotta go because I don't belong here," I actually think it was a setup for that. But I also think it was just as terrible in that respect. Okay, <laughs> it's only been a one-minute conversation where we right. said three weeks later, "Gotta leave Yoda, can't take off my helmet." Does the audience got that? Okay, now yes, let's. No. No, I agree with you. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I just don't think I don't think the emphasis on the helmet as much as yeah. We got to get these points across before we move on. Yeah, well, I'm okay with them talking about the helmet. It's just you can be more clever about how you do it. I think the dialogue in the first couple of we talked about this, establishing very cleverly what's the state of the galaxy, talking about currency, things like that, with what's going on in the story. You, they did it very well, where you were learning and understanding what's happening with this character what his relationship is, what the empire is up to, all that stuff without flat out saying with a with a scroll um, what what the deal is. Instead of, yeah, so what is, what, this is like a, it was like an episode of Friends or something. So what does happen if you take off your helmet? Well, we didn't finish that conversation for the audience earlier. You know what I mean? If it makes you feel better, this episode was directed by Bryce Dallas Howard, so. <clears throat> I don't know who that is, who is that? Oh, she's the redheaded girl from Jurassic World. She's the actress, the lead actress. Really? So this is the world. second woman to direct uh -huh. the film? Yeah, so so basically you're just admitting you, you hate women. Is doing Obi-Wan or is it the other girl? Um, I don't know who's doing Obi-Wan. The, they, they're given the entire Obi-Wan series to one of these two girls. I think it was the other girl. Thank goodness, because this episode was crap. I'm not going to say it was crap. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like the direction. And the way, and it's not her. The director can't fix up where it's they. It's the other one, movie. Deborah Chow. That's who it is. That's Deborah Chow. Is. Yeah, it's not. It's yeah. not Bryce. Okay, but anyway, I'm the just kidding. Though I'm you're not you're not. I, I know. Because <laughs> Deborah Chow did a really good job with her episode. Yeah. So yeah. Just not utilizing what Mandalorians can do. But again, that's not the director's call. Anyway, so. The uh, just the way that it was clipped together, the script, the way whoever threw this together in the storyboard, whoever wrote this one, I mean, I, I don't know. It's it, it was weak. I just felt like it was all hand fisted. I'm sure you thought it was all an homage to those, but seriously, the way the dialogue came together, it felt much more like Three Amigos than it did the awesome episode of Serenity, which with good writing. They yeah. should have John Sweden mm -hmm. write this episode. I, I thought this episode was okay. I, I compared it to episode two in that I'm like, I see what they're doing, I see they're trying. They're trying to do an homage, but they're also trying to be all like, look, he can't just leave this baby, which is the first thing you would he you would do, right? You're a bounty hunter. You're not going to carry this kid around with you. You got to find right. a place to stick it. 
So that that's fine. That's all fine. Just like episode two is kind of supposed to sort of set up, well, what's the rest of the adventure going to be like? Right. Yeah, let's build our relationship and, and, and get us ready for the rest. Yeah. And this one's like, okay, well, now he's blasted out with the kid. Let's, let's kind of set up, well, he's going to try and drop off the kid. He's got to have a reason to keep it with him. Right. Here it is. So right. we, we get that, but not I as well done. Episode two, I thought, was extremely well done for building characters and moving forward. I didn't think okay. so for this as a filler episode. I agree with that. I And I don't think this, I didn't feel like this was a filler episode. Like, why are we wasting our time? There was nothing consequential other than introducing this other girl, the character, not the not the um, Pocahontas girl that the Lance called her. But like, it didn't, it didn't feel well executed that I, I, any of the connections worked for me. It felt more like Star I, Wars. I, I like Mandalorian and Cardoon. I, I thought that was fun. I, I actually was, like those two characters. Even though I don't like her acting in this, but uh, it was fine in the beginning, but the, her with the villagers and everything that happened with the villagers, I didn't buy it. But anyway, let's just cut to the, the assassination attempt. Holds the gun, aiming it at, at, at Boba Fett, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then it looks at her. I thought that's the cliche. Killing the woman. Yeah. I thought he was going to miss the Mandalorian and hit her. Or he's going to ricochet off. If it ricocheted off his armor and hit her, I that would have been. That, that yeah. would have been awesome. Yep. You should have written this episode, Zach. Anyway, <laughs> pull it on her. Unless she's going to come back, which would be stupid. I never want to see this character again because the relationship didn't make sense unless at the very end, Yoda's safe with the Ewoks or something and then he comes back here to retire. That would be weird. But anyway. I thought it was gonna hit her, but it doesn't. He moves over to Baby Yoda. I thought that they had the guts to kill they Baby Yoda. take out Baby Yoda, yeah. Did you think that even for a second? No, I did. I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh my really? God, are they gonna kill him now? And then what do you do with the rest of the season? Like, that would be crazy, but. Yeah, uh, I would be so stoked for what, the, it's like, cause this is being the most passionate vengeance. He already gave up his code, his honor as a bounty hunter with the guild and everything to, to go back and save this, re to atone for his sin, right? Right. And then for it to die the next episode, oh, he would just unleash on, uh, he's like, you know what? Nothing matters now. I've lost everything. I'm just going to get vengeance for for what happened. That would be awesome. That would well, go back I, to the Mandalorian Wars with Boba Fett versus the entire Mandalorian or the Bounty Hunter guild. Right. That would be really cool. Well, but and it, I thought what they were going to do is just cut there. Like, I thought they were going to cliffhanger there, which, which would have been like, are you serious? But they didn't. They didn't. They, well, they can't show they Yoda. Have... <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, it would have, like, cut to black and gone to credits. That's what I thought was going to happen. Totally so not. that you're stuck till the next episode to figure out what happened. But no, no, what? What's her name? Caught him, and then they can't stay anymore. Uh, I did well, think that was a you. that was a pretty quick flip too, and I think this goes to what you're saying of passage of time. Like, if you didn't feel the passage of time, so when they're like, "Oh, he should stay here," and then all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, we have to leave," you're like, "Well, well there wasn't there, there wasn't really any time between those two decisions." Yeah. I get I get why he made the decision. Yeah. But it, yeah, it, the pacing. It, it, it was not the greatest. battle to the following morning. They're just chilling out on the porch, whittling. I was like, "Okay, so it's the next morning." Uh, three weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. Fade to black. Have have the have the, the got to put some script up here. It just says three weeks later. If you're just gonna do it, just do it that way. That way, I'm like already thinking that I'm not thinking it's lazy dialogue. So here's anyway. what's interesting. I wonder who the writers are because for TV series, usually the writers have more in the writers and the actors have much more influence than the directors with the movie. Yeah. The director has a lot of control, but with the TV series, the writers and the actors make the characters, the directors just fill in for a single episode here and there. Right. right. So it would be interesting to look at that because yeah, is it the writing or, or did the director take the writing and, and manipulate it? So, so you have the showrunner. The showrunner, when they have the overall story, showrunner and the and the writers are like, hey, this episode's gonna be this story. This is this story. Yeah, this right. Story. And here you write, you and the writers group, you're gonna write this one. You're, I mean, and what Fabro, whoever may have written all of it, whatever. I think it does say those too. I don't think it has like its writing team, but whatever. And then they say, we're gonna have you direct this episode. You direct this episode. You direct this episode. But the showrunner is the one that would have the whole concept of it. Here's a good, good cliffhanger. Here's we're gonna have this little story. Here's we're gonna have this little story. They're the right. ones that decision right 
And we established from the first episode that they didn't know, they don't know how to have patience to sit on a cliffhanger like when they showed the baby Yoda. Like we talked about that. That would have been right. cool. Like, like Mal in Firefly. Just like, huh. You know, if they cut to the shot, having a real, if they took time to make a real relationship for them just for a second, or even if they established that for three weeks they were actually together in the hut, woo! You know? Well, maybe just because of the time of the episode, maybe this is clearly something that should have been two episodes. Where yes. they could have taken the time to develop their relationships, okay. to, to give Yoda a, a connection to this village. Maybe Yoda, sorry. Baby Yoda, yeah. who, who's not Baby Yoda, to give him a connection to the village so that when you are forced to leave, it, there's a little more to it for the Mandalorian and for the Baby Yoda. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they probably should have extended this and spent a little more time on each episode. That, that's or just, probably what they should have done. You know, kicked it out another 20 minutes. I mean, how much more expensive? You already have the set, you have the actors. How much more expensive would it, without a battle, without spaceships or lasers or anything, have more, more scenes in the village? I, I, I actually movie. like, I, I, I agree with you. I think there's a good point to that, but I actually like the, the 30 to 35 minute episode. I do You're in and out. Yeah. But then, then fine, make it a nine ep, nine or 10 episodes. You could, you, you spent two what episodes I think. on not Tatooine in the first two episodes. Spend two episodes here so we have time to establish this. And just flesh some of those things out you're talking about. I actually yeah. think that's a really good, that, they probably should have. I was saying, Three Amigos, when you have the little boy that goes up to Dusty, he's like, can I have your watch when you are dead? That one line, you know, showed that he this one little boy liked Dusty. And then at the very end, he gives the watch to the little boy, right? Right. At the end of this one, the little kid goes up to Yoda and hugs him. I'm going to miss you so much. There's like 10 kids there who are all, all playing soccer together, watching him eat frogs. Right. Why did that one kid have just a little, you know what I mean? It's like... I don't see any connections with any of these people other than I was just told, you know? Anyway. Yeah. George Lucas mode of storytelling, right? Tell, tell you what happened. It's telling me what happened instead of showing me. At least at me. least from the prequels. Yeah, totally. <laughs> anyway, so what do, you, what do you rate this one? This, was, this one couldn't be a 10. No, <laughs> it's not. Um, <laughs> well, what's funny is I think my rating went down when you brought up. That episode's called Heart, Heart of Gold, by the way from uh firefly, firefly. <laughs> and Compared so to that, made you drop in this one a little bit yeah because that <laughs> that that was a really good episode it is with horrible effect you can say or not horrible but those special effects in that one are nothing compared to this it has nothing to do with it nothing uh, volume budget and all that stuff it's good writing good characters yeah this no that that's right the the effects in firefly are are, are okay but they're also it's older it was 2003 but uh, and I think the TV, even with inflation, the budget for Firefly was not the same as this. But I, so yeah, I'd probably give it like a six out of ten, so, something I think like you that. Enough. Six or seven? Yeah, no, I, I think I I'll stick with a six. <laughs> it, it was pretty bad. The only reason I give it that high, honestly, is I, so I have a really low low um, because I watch so many independent films that are just awful. <laughs> And so if I can see what's going on, I can generally follow the plot and I can hear what's being said. Yeah. That, that's like automatically like a four or five for me. This one, it has a, a good homage. I enjoyed some of the Western themes that they did and played off of. That's why I bump it up a really little higher. Good. I'm starting to enjoy that. Do you remember the this, this story or the show Brave Star, the old one? It was like the He-Man era. No, I don't remember that. No. Same thing. It was a Western. It was super, It was space and future stuff. But they used all the exact same Western cliches, and it was awesome. And but it was. I, this is starting to remind me of that. Only Star Wars, which makes it way cool. Yeah, I, I, I love all that Western stuff they're doing. I really do. Which is why I, I liked that last scene with him and the the girl in the village. Right? It's like. That's a good scene where she's like, oh, about to take off the helmet and he doesn't. If you have the, the everything leading up to it, right? Yeah. It's a, and, and it's also a good homage, like I mentioned earlier, to Cowboys. Like, yeah. you know, he's the he, he's got to ride off into the sunset, which is... Yeah, you can't, you can't stay, yeah. Yeah. I liked it. I liked the flow of the episode. I liked, I liked the concept of everything that happened in it conceptually. I just didn't like... 
and it's not even just delivery or execution. It's just it, it should have been written to stream to flow better. And like, well, you this are, is where I'm saying I don't know who to blame for it. I, I don't I don't know if the director took it and was all like, oh, this isn't clear, and then like added a bunch of dialogue, or if this was well, the, space the writers. Was a lot I don't of know. Dialogue, but it was pretty unclear what was going on. Honestly, it really but, was. Yeah, it, it seemed a little different than the other episodes. And that could be budgetary issues. But anyway, all right. Well, six or seven out of ten. That's not bad. What do you think? That's not bad. I don't know what I would give it. I'd have to go through my little system, but um, who cares? <laughs> I mean, you gave the last one an eight out of ten, right? Yeah, seven, eight, eight or nine, yeah. This one, okay, let's do it. Story and plot, I give it a one out of two because I love the concept, but I don't like how it went. Characters, one out of two because I liked what they tried to do with the characters, but nothing connected or did anything. Special effects, three or two out of two. So there's, uh, what is that? One, two, Four. three, one. Um, music and sound, amazing sound design. I love the, the music in this too. Really cool. Um, so that's two. So that's a seven. What's the other category? Music. Cinematography. Um... One. I actually don't think there's any particular inspiring cinematography in this one. I think about it. Well, yes, a job done. So what is that? A seven. I give it a seven. On a my seven. Little, on my little system as far, unless I messed up my categories. Anyway, seven out of ten. All right. Anyway, so if you, any other thoughts, uh, Zach? No, it, it's still fun. Like, it, it, I'm still looking forward to the next episode, so. So what do you think is going to happen now? Do you think he's going to just continue on the run? Or do you think he's going to be like, okay, hey, the only way I'm going to be able to find any rest for us is to take out the that's what i'm assuming he's got to come up with a new strategy because obviously he just uh, otherwise he's going to be on the run forever so i think he's going to try and um i also think gina crono is coming back the the car dune so i wonder if he she he's going to go get a little group together and go take the fight to them or something you don't think she is no i think she is i think she is i hope so i hope she does a little better when she comes back (laughs) <laughs> so yeah um, I, I i don't know what though i i honestly don't know what they're gonna do which is kind of fun like he, he his first idea was get this guy to a little planet that he can live and now it's like oh well that didn't work what the crap do i do next yeah which was i think that would have been so cool it, or if, i mean it would have worked either way would be fine I, I think it's fine that he's stuck with the baggage he's got to take care of it which is gonna make his job harder to keep it safe but i think it would have been neat to have left yoda going here for him to go and figure out what's going on by himself. And that would have taken away where I'm going to be like, yeah, hey, I hope we don't get overboard or, or get bored with this cuteness with the Yoda thing. But uh, I like both ways. But I think it would, have been, it would have been just as good to have left it here to come back. Yeah. Anyway, doesn't matter. Okay. Well, everyone, thanks for watching. If you really loved Cara Dune's, whatever her name is, performance or whatever, then tell me I'm wrong. But if not, um, see which of your favorite Western cliches were thrown in this one and uh, not executed as well as others. But uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this, great. Keep watching. We'll do episode five, which will be released uh, in the next half hour or so. <laughs> but we'll talk about it later. Um, but these are fun. Zach, thank you so much. I'm glad you took take some time to collaborate with me and uh, tell me where I'm wrong because you, you point out something. <laughs> hey, I, yeah, we had a few disagreements, but I, I think we overall agreed. Yes. On, on the episode record i'm really enjoying the show i don't i mean just because i find things that i don't like that i'm dissatisfied that's just the fan in me not i'm like this this uh uptight wannabe critic or anything it's just yeah it's i think that's where it's good for you to give your your score at the end right because you're like no i actually generally enjoyed it yeah uh, which is how i felt like the first episode like people are like you gave that like a, a nine out of ten and i'm all like well yeah my complaints were really minor I mean, yeah. it was brief moments. Um, yeah. it, you know, it, it's they're super great. Like, in general, The Mandalorian overall, even with this episode and overall, it, it's pretty great. This episode was a really good video game live action version. The yeah. whole thing, but like little cutscenes. That's exactly how this this video game played. Is like here, I landed on this planet. I met my uh, the person to give me the mission. I I investigated, had one encounter came back, had the next fight, had the boss fight, and then the next cutscene on the porch where they have this really to-the-point dialogue. And the boss... The, and uh, then the character rejected the romance. That's what happened. It came up with the dialogue <laughs> option for romance, and they're all like, no. 
like, you take off helmet or no? You're like, no. No. Sorry. <laughs> and then you have the, the, some other player is like the sniper is like, you got to line up the target. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But you, run in, so you have to do it quick enough or else you get shot in the back and they ran out of time. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, keep watching Mandalorian, and watch this and see what we think, because we're so smart and so brilliant. All right. We'll see you next time on Thanks on, on Thanks on Saints on Cinema. Good night. Yes. <laughs>